Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. Hope you're doing well today. Today I'm hanging out with Gathering the Magic and we're just going to chat about the new Glint Rewards structure and system. And uh, it's exciting to see these, you know, the different ways that we can be rewarded for the, our, the same time and effort we've been putting into this amazing game. Uh, there's angles that I think Gathering has taken or seen with respect to this new system that I'd love to hear his input on. I have my initial reactions on how this has felt or, you know, even what I'm thinking about it. But then there's even just, I think there's a conversation to be had around what we can, how we can assign value to the Glint or maybe even to the Soulbound reward cards that we've been receiving for the last, I think, year, year and a half or whatever it's been because of what it's, how it's been burnt to enable the purchase of some of these titles. So it'll be a bit of a, sort of meandering conversation, but I'm sure it'll be one thing will lead to another. I'm, and I'm sure, and I hope you'll find it entertaining. So if that sounds good, stick around, stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Gathering, how you doing, buddy? And and uh, what are you thinking about this new system? Good. Um, got this week off work, so have some time to uh, charge and relax. Um, had a great Easter, a uh, great Easter with uh, my family. Uh, went out to Kalamazoo and spent it with my mom and uh, sister and her family. So been a good week um like everyone else getting uh accustomed to the new glint system and the reward shop uh first impressions are i think it's great uh for me i was always i didn't really care for the the whole focus system and having to wait you know for a 24-hour period uh, to collect your loot chests now it's like you can play as much as you want and whenever you build up a certain amount of glint you can go in the store whenever you want and uh, purchase some items so first impressions i really do like the uh the shop um, i know they they have already talked about adjusting some of the glint that you will receive uh, per battle but we can can get into that in a little bit but overall very very happy with the uh with the store and the glint system mm -hmm. yeah i would say I, I i share the same thing the same feelings and reactions. One thing that you just said there though, that I hadn't really thought about before is just even that 24 hour period and how it used to be. It is more satisfying actually to be able to control it in a sense like you, you earn glint per battle and now you can just, you could effectively go purchase or spend that glint as you accrue enough to spend that. Like if you have 150 and you want to initiate a draw, go for it. If you have 400 and you want to adept draw, go for it. If you want to save for the bigger sort of prizes, then you, of course you need to wait, but it's, that's different than having to be forced to wait for a 24 hour window, which is, which felt quite arbitrary. And there was that, that over the history of how that was implemented, remember it used to be, it was 24 hours from when you first sort of started that reward period, meaning like your first battle. And then they changed it where that didn't really make any sense. So it was just really every 24 hours. Um, so it's been kind of a, it's been a trial and error process for how they've, handed out or, or allowed us to have flexibility in the choice of our rewards. And it feels like this is the next level of that, where not only do we get this currency that allows us to direct our own reward choices, but actually even in timing of it, not every 24 hours, but every time you get enough, if you want, or for that matter, I'm, I'm really down. I'm excited before the fact that you could just theoretically save the glint and then get ready for that next release of soulbound cards, because that will be a huge, um, leg up or maybe, you know, initial advantage over opponents that you're facing that don't do that same approach. Have you, this is a bit of a digression from where I want to end up with the, with, with some of this other topic that we mentioned a moment ago, but still, I really want to hear your thoughts. What do you, what are you thinking about that side of it? I know your, your accounts are kind of on the lower side, but do you imagine either that you or that people, you know, will be saving glint for that next soulbound edition? Um, and what do you think about that approach? Yeah, I think a lot of the people that play in the higher leagues, you know, a lot of people that have been playing in Diamond and Champion, they're at the point now where, at least for their commons and rares, they're probably pretty much set. You know, they're just trying to fill out certain uh, epics and legendaries. So I think those people, unless they're um, chasing a title that's going to cost, you know, a million or more glint, they're probably going to save up their glint for the next Soulbound set. Mm -hmm. Maybe not now, but, you know, they've kind of hinted at maybe sometime this summer is going to be when the uh, the new set of Soulbound cards come out. So I think once that announcement is made that it's like, okay, guys, you know, June 15th, you know, the next update, you know, we're going to add the new Soulbound set. I think that season before, you're going to see a lot of people saving up their glint to, to get that head start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit of a, sometimes the saving approach 
is hard because you don't feel like you're quote unquote receiving anything for your effort. And people want that daily fix or that maybe moment by moment fix of, 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 of I just received this for my effort. And that is part of why we, I think we both like the fact that you can just go buy a, a draw anytime you have the right, the appropriate amount of glint. But there are those, I don't know if you know the marshmallow test, but like you, you ask your kid, you want a marshmallow now, or you can get two if you wait. And that there are those who will wait for that second marshmallow. And it's, it's actually an interesting psychological experiment because it speaks to the, the child or the person, because this is not just a, a phenomenon that appeals or applies to children. It applies to adults. This is a sense of delayed gratification. If you can delay your own gratification, you can actually position yourself to maybe benefit disproportionately. And I think that's true with a lot of cryptocurrency sort of stuff, whether it's like SPS accumulation or, or maybe it's just holding on to soul bounds or maybe it's holding on the glint until that moment happens where you can be that first kind of buyer and, and actor into it. And um, yeah, I do absolutely think it'll be a distinct advantage. Even if we look at the soul bounds that we have now, you know that those set you apart and they, they allow you to win. Um, and so I think some people will do it. And yeah, you're probably right. It's going to be maybe those sort of upper echelon. I saw, I wonder if I could find it quickly. I saw an X a post from brave tofu i think it was i don't i didn't i didn't re retweet it or anything so i won't be able to maybe find it but brave tofu was talking about how much sps he got per battle and um and he showed that he got 40 sps in champ low champ at the beginning of the season which is awesome but but on the glint side he was getting 1600 i think it was if i'm recalling right correctly i think it was 1650 ish per win and so those sorts of players, real, you know, in champion at the start of the season, already crushing it, already the best of the best are going to be, even with these sort of low glint payouts. And maybe let's spend a minute on that because I think the glint, we, you, you know, Matt even talked about it in a post. I think the glint payouts are low, um, uh, but even those, sorry, those those players at those levels are already stacking. I would say a lot of glint at sixteen hundred a win. Um, as opposed to the 300 that I'm getting, I, what are you getting and where, what, what league are you playing? Uh, let me check right now. I am playing, I believe it's in gold. Oh, okay. This is, so I am in currently in diamond three from last season. My rating is, uh, 3000 on the nose. My end of season loot right now is 90,000. Yep. So the question I have is. I don't have a diamond three deck. Pretty much I have max silver, maybe low gold deck. Mm -hmm. Do I want to play, probably lose a little bit of rating and lose that end of season loot, have it drop from like 90,000 to 80,000? Yeah. So what do I do at this point? Um, yeah, that's as far as how much am I earning? Uh, my last battle, I won 280 glint at 3000 rating. And that's in, sorry, that's wild or modern? Uh, wild. Okay. I'm, this is a battle on my screen here. I, I, I'm about to win. And uh, this is 3,700. So that's, I think that's champ three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I won't watch the battle, but I'll skip. And I got 298, 96 glint. This is champ 3,700 RP. That's champ league, I believe. And um, and it's, uh, this is in wild. So just under 300 glint, two SPS. But man, modern is paying substantially more at least with the sps this is gold this is my last win today gold i got gold two i think or maybe even gold three i'm at 2420 rp and uh, that's six sps that's triple the sps the glint is slightly less at 250 um but uh you know i am still convinced that like my attention in modern is worth it it, it, it is a matter of, do I always have the time? That's gold two. Uh, gold two is paying triple the SPS of champ three. And so that's pretty wild. But um, to circle back to Glint, uh, and you mentioned titles a moment ago, because you talked about how, you know, before we, we started talking about what, saving up for the next Soulbound edition, we talked, you mentioned they might save up for the titles. And I actually really wanted to like, look at that for, for maybe the rest of, let's say like five, 10 minutes here. Um, because I really think I'm interested in those titles and I actually, you know, I'm played on relatively high level in the game and I think, and I have a good soul bound collection. I think I could probably burn substantially, a, you know, a number of them and, and, and access some more glint. I actually haven't looked at, let's start here. I haven't looked at the, the glint rewards 
for card burning. Um, is it? Let, let me open up my cards and see right now. It's only sold Actually, by the I have rewards, all right? the numbers written down if you're interested. Do you? Yeah. Okay. So um, just for the regular foils, if you burn a common, you get 25. Rares, you get 100. Epics, 500. And legendary, 2,500. Uh, for your gold foils, um, 625 for a common, 2,500 for a rare, 12,500 for an epic, and 62,500 for a legendary. Wow. So 62,500 for a legendary gold foil. Um, and it's just, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just reward cards. You can't burn other, it's just soulbound reward cards. You can't burn other cards or can you? Um, you can burn other cards, but I think that's still just for DEC. Gotcha. So your gladiator cards will give you merits, soulbound will give you glint, and then regular cards will give you DEC. Okay. Because I have some, let me see this. I just want to look at a couple examples, specifically at the higher end, the legendary side. Like I've got two barracks, sneak eye, legendary gold foils, soul bounds. So the collection power is 12.5. So is it like a 5X of CP or is it like, how does that, cause you said 62,000, I think for a, for a gold foil legendary, right? Yeah, it looks like it's 25 times the burn value of a regular um, soul bound card. Oh, so it's essentially, so they, they it's a, like almost a totally different calculation. It ha, it's not to do with power? I guess not. So um, click on the icon. It, it'll say yes or no, but it'll show you the amount. So this will convert one card into 62,500, which I'm trying to do the math in my head. If you if you went 12,005, which is the power, times five, I don't think that's the same. Five. Yeah. Is it 5x? Hang on. 12, five. Let's go. It's here. the same. Yep. Is it? Times five. Boom. Yeah. So maybe it's five X. Okay. So cancel for now. I might actually do that. But if, if I was to do that and let's see, so 62, five, I, I'm, I, I actually, I'm as we, well, before we started recording, I was, in, we talked about the titles. I thought to myself, could I do that? Could I burn a million CP today or a million, you know, glint or five million glint and get that big that big title i i don't even know the percentage bonuses associated with that but of course you know i want more titles i have land i'm like in this for the long game and when you mentioned the, the non-card market that we were selling that for a thousand bucks the renowned um the title let's go here and look at it by the way no market so uh, just real quick math if you were to burn 16 gold foil legendary soul bounds that will give you get you 1 million glint exactly to hmm. get that lowest title. Interesting. Um, I want to see it. The pr the proven is it, this is the cheap one. What are the th what are the That's three titles piece. called? Uh the proven the veteran what's the, the renowned veteran. Yep. Okay. And I know someone did sell the Proven yesterday uh, for $79. Um, he left a message in my chat that he picked one up and sold it. Wow. That feels like... So they are selling around that $79, $80 range. I'm not sure if the uh, the higher two have sold it, uh, oh. sold it all. Probably not, because the Renowned, I think there's only a couple that have actually been claimed at this point. Three, uh, from based on our what we were noticing earlier. But So $1,000... See... There's only 50 of these total, or there can only be 50 of them, I think, um, based on that previous market screen. Um, there's eight of the Provens listed, and you said one of them sold for 80 bucks, and it's a million, it's a million glint, and you just said that was like 16 legendary gold foils. Um, that's a big deal, man. I'm, and of course, yeah. you could burn a variety of cards. It doesn't all have to be legendary gold foils, but then when you start burning epics or commons or even regular foil cards of course you need even more multipliers of those cards i do think I, I i need to off you know outside of the video look at sort of what i would have to burn and what i'd be willing to say goodbye to to maybe access one of these but a thousand bucks um if you just said if you just said that 16 gold foils would get you a million let's hang on before we go before we do the math on this i just want to open up the reward screen again so the renown uh, is the best, and it costs five million. And the proven is the cheap one, and it's one million. And you just said it was sixteen, I think, gold foil legendaries to get the proven. Um, yep. So then you want to five x that to come up to to the five million, which is can't do that. Eighty. Enough. Is it eighty? 
Yep. So 80 Man, gold foil legendaries. Hard to burn 80 gold foil legendaries. I don't think I could do it. 80 gold foil legendaries. Yeah, I mean, that would be pretty intense. First of all, I don't have that many. I, I probably have, you know, six or something like that. Um, but just even to like put a number to it gives a bit of a sense of the weight and the significance of what that would. Now you could, like we said a moment ago, access, you could, you know, you might be able to burn a substantial amount of epic gold foils and rare gold foils and 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 uh, that will get you part of the way. And maybe there's some regular foils that you could say goodbye to. Maybe it's your whole gold foil collection or, or you know, who knows? It's, it's not necessarily just legendaries, but this is interesting to kind of give it a like a number. But then if you went and you said 80 gold foil legendaries, if you even had that, to imagine that as a thousand US dollar value, like essentially that's what's happening. Somebody went ahead and deleted that that's that amount of card or that sort of that access point into the glint and in order to buy three of these titles, because there was 50 and now there's, there's 47 available. First of all, I think it's extremely scarce. 50 titles is very interesting from a scarcity perspective. But second of all, I, I like that it's actually giving us some framework to consider the price point around the Soulbound reward cards. Because for so long we've said they, 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 they sort of don't carry a value or, you know, people, they just lack the imagination to think forward into the future. We talked about the marshmallow thing. It's like sometimes we just don't have the um this the capacity to be patient in terms of even assessing or understanding what the reward we are receiving even is when an sps token is 1.5 cents and i receive it today is do am i receiving for that win i showed you six sps am i am i getting paid what is it like nine cents or is it more than that it depends on when you sort of your time scale and and, and i think the patience element has to come into consideration when you think these things through 50 is small and uh and i i i do see but at the same time i do i wouldn't want to say goodbye to soulbound rewards that are really critical um and that'd be that'd be the sort of the other side of the coin are, have you thought about personally burning i know your collections and soul bounds will be smaller but have you thought about this even from a, a draw perspective no it, just for me um being basically you know silver maybe low gold um and then my ten dollar account max bronze i'm right now i'm just looking to accumulate as many cards as i uh as i can not mm. burning um, so that's why I made uh, the video yesterday trying to crunch the numbers and figure out, okay, what's the best way for me to get the most cards for the cheapest price? So working on that now. But yeah, I haven't really looked at burning. Um, the quick math that I just did for the Renowned, I think that may be extremely cheap if you base it on a gold foil legendary to me should probably be at a price point at around $50. Um, I know the markets come down a little bit where some of them are in the $35 to, to $40 range. But if you have to, let's just say $1,000 yeah. and it takes, what did I say, 80 yeah. of those gold foil legendaries, that's valuing them at $12.50. Yeah. I think it should be four times that. Yeah. That's so if it. four times that, then your $1,000 title really should be a $4,000 title. Yeah. That's really interesting. And I think that probably, I, I track with you on that and I would go, even if you wanted to conservatively imagine like people, you know, you might say it's still a thousand bucks and it's, you know, the right now the, the price of things has been dipping. And so some people are going to be, there's like a smaller audience and SPS is like, you know, under two cents. One, oh, look at that uh, under 1.8 right now. It's been pumping a little here, but it was at 1.5 yesterday, I think. So all of that kind of feeds into the uh, capacity for someone to, to pay that thousand. But I still think conservatively based on just that simplistic analysis of, of what it would take to get that uh, glint says, you know, it's at least $2,000 value right there. Like it, even from mm -hmm. a 50, like there's only 50 possible units is like, that's truly scarce. And we could look at how that compares to some of the other titles. But I think many of the other titles even at the highest levels, even the most recent one with the, um, the burninator or whatever like the highest level for that i bet there i bet there let's let's look at it i bet there's way more of that let's go market is there can i see this through market let's find out i think so and maybe when you click on the title it might show you how many were issued yeah I'm hoping so even if will. there's not many for sale don bringer say, you know don bringer was the issued. one owned 
No, let's see. Oh, hang on. The top, no, it says, okay, so it was issued to the top 30, meaning there was only 30 of them. Um, okay, so that's like more scarce. What about, let's check on one of the other ones. The high roller. How many high rollers were there at the, I think there might've been, there might've been a possibility of like 200, if I recall correctly, but no, there wasn't nearly that many sold of the high rollers for Vegas. Doesn't say, but, um, it should, it, if Splinterlands is listening, we would love to see like a, like you do with BCX cards. You can see on the market, you can see there actually are like 10,000 cards of, of this kind and quality. And like, um, you know, so many, um, there's so many BCX and then there's so many cards. That information is really relevant. And from a buying perspective, I think you would incentivize, you would, you would allow people to have the information in front of you and maybe we would sell more units um, of different things, including titles. If you just, for instance, said, one of one of 500 or 150 or whatever if if uh baron's toolbox is listening he could maybe add that to uh his site i know he likes to um, add a lot of information so that would be nice to have is not only how many of each title were issued uh, but what percentage uh, bonus it'll give you to land because that's something i think people would really be interested in too check this out the burninator title was <clears throat> was rewarded for those who placed in the top 10 so this is even really 10 of them. Wow. So, okay. So 50 is not extremely, extremely rare, but clearly it's not abundant. Um, and I, so I do think that that probably puts it, I still think you're right though. Like coming back to the evaluation, I think this is very telling. It's not a $12 and 50 cents. I don't believe the, the soul bond legendaries will amount to a $12 and 50 cent value when they reach marketplace. I think, the discount you're seeing as you look at the bur the um, the renowned price point here at a thousand, I think there's a discount happening because one, the person didn't truly, the person who's listing this renown for a thousand bucks would love to have a thousand dollars. But secondly, the soulbound cards they burnt to access that tool to sell this asset for a thousand bucks, they they didn't value very significantly, right? They probably had a massive like who can we see the seller? Okay, SP, I don't know who that is, Blast, Blast Timber. I don't know who that is, but I imagine, I wonder if we can look them up. I wanna see what their, what their collection looks like. Splinter cards. I bet they have a really substantial, I bet it's like a massive Spellbound deck, even still. Uh, tools. Kind of on a quick side note, have you been uh, accumulating any uh, DEC with it being as far under peg as it's been? I want to, but no, no, I haven't. Um, I am convinced it's not going to stay there, but I'm also, how do I do this again? Tools, soulbound card monitor, boom. Uh, account, check rewards. Yeah, I'm convinced it's going gonna, it's gonna to make its way back to peg. Like, so to me, it's free money, but the problem for me is all my stuff is tied up in crypto and my crypto is just, you know, sideways or down. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so making that move, for instance, from SPS into DEC just doesn't make much sense. Um, and some of my other tokens, you know, while they're up from where I ultimately first bought them, they're not anywhere near where I want to let them go. And so I'm just forced to sit still. I don't have a lot of like one of my things for the future is I want, I really want to, I want to grow comfortable with like sitting on just some cash. And I haven't done that historically. I've just been like all in. And then when things like this happen, I just don't have any more dry powder to move. Let's see. So he's got, see, he doesn't even have that hard. Like this is his reward collection and it's, it's strong. 80% on commons, 90 on reward or on rare, 70 on epics and 50 on legendaries. That's a strong collection, but I bet I have a better collection meaning his gold foil he looks like he burned every one of his gold foils he burned do, them all to do that but i mean if based on his his regular uh his regular foil collection i probably have a better collection meaning i have access to more gold foils probably let's see so 80 90 70 50 is what he had 80 look i've got 190 90 90 like my based on my regular foil percentages being substantially higher than his, I imagine, 
And I, I th these regular foils being at 100 means that I actually have more than I need. It's not just 100, it's like 110 or something. Um, because there's, once it once you reach full, it doesn't keep tracking. Um, and so I probably have more than enough to burn five mil, but I'd have to say goodbye to some interesting bonuses that I, I don't necessarily want to say goodbye to. Um, my point, I guess, in, bringing, in, in searching him was really that um, I think more people could do this if they wanted. But secondly, the value of the cards being burnt is is currently being, I think, overlooked. When you say a thousand bucks for those cards to, to delete a full gold for a collection, I think ultimately that's that's a place of regret, probably. Like not from a, you, you know, a thousand bucks is great, but I'm just from a place of, I think they sell for more when they're made transferable. Yeah. Here's the question though, are there going to be any left when they're being able to be unlocked and transferable? Because yeah. everybody may be burning their extras now to get glint, wow. to get extra draws or to get titles. So when these things become unlockable, people are going to have one set for themselves to play with. Yeah. They're going to have burnt all their extras. They're going to have burnt all their gold foils. So anybody listening to this, if you have any gold foil epic or legendary soulbound cards, Kind of like Dwayne was saying with the marshmallow example, you may want to resist the temptation to burn those, save those, wait till they're unlockable. Even if it costs you know, a decent amount to unlock them, there's not going to be that many there, which is kind of funny because everyone's talking about how there's an excess of soulbound cards. There's way too many cards. As you can see, just in the first day or so, a lot of these are getting bit, uh, getting burnt and taken off the, the potential market for the future. Mm -hmm. So I agree. And it, it leaves me in a place of like, I still want to look at it for my own safe. And it's probably going to be like an hour long conversation by myself where I'm like, okay, would I, would I be willing to say goodbye to these cards? I did this with my gladiators recently. And I did say goodbye to about $40 worth of the gladiators to buy D, to access uh, DC. Um, and uh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to look at again, my soulbound reward cards and ask that question. I have a pretty awesome deck. I do like the idea of having all of these gold foils, but then again, like I said in you know a moment ago, let's see an example. Like uh, I gotta level these guys up. Looks like I probably make them almost max level. Uh, what's an example? Soulbound gold foil. I have some soulbound gold foil maxes. I know I do. I'm not seeing a bunch of them. My reg foils, at least I do. On my on my soulbound reg foil, look at this, like ten maxed. I I have a so a fungus finger maxed out, and then I also have three hundred and fourteen fungus fingers, which means that I have three hundred and thirteen copies of, of fungus linger that I don't really need. And yes, I could hold onto them like you just said, and sell them into the marketplace by making them transferable one day. And I bet you're right that the prices on those will be higher than you imagine because so many people will go for the one marshmallow, and they'll try and burn them now to access glint to get you know. Probably not, they won't even be thinking title. They'll be thinking a few more, what are they called? Um, chests, they're not chests, what are they called? Uh, draws. Yeah, Th that's like the really short, I think there's this interesting thing where rich, The rich, we've heard before, the rich become richer, the rich always become, they always get richer. It's like money makes money, um, it takes money to make money, all these different ideas around once you get started, in sort of affluence it's you know just compounds and that's so true because the reality is that it takes a certain attention and commitment and confidence and patience to allow you yourself to accumulate to a place of wealth in the first place like you don't you know you didn't get where you are at by starting three weeks ago all of the accumulation you've had on your various accounts even the $10 account, let's talk about that for a minute. But I mean, man, it, it's happened because of commitment and time and confidence and patience. And and um, and so then we get to a place where we have this, you have a different thing, a different sort of reality, but like every one of us has whatever reality we're in and the sort of accumulation you've, you've, you've come across. And then you act in a certain way today to position yourself for tomorrow. And either that is forward thinking or it is it's based on gratification today and that is a massive that is that is to me the earth shifting 
sort of foundational basis by which someone either, you know, is part of the top 1% of things, or they are just coasting along at like sort of somewhere in the middle. You have any thoughts on that, Gather? I'm just looking at your collection and just drooling, looking at all those multiple numbers for like Ashanas and all those other cards. Yeah, dude, uh, yeah. That's the point that I hope to get to someday, though. You know, keep playing every day, keep, you know, grinding it out, keep on forging, you know, yeah. even when sentiment, you know, is, is down, you know, good times, bad times. Just, you know, I enjoy the game. I enjoy playing every day. I enjoy the challenge, mm -hmm. like I said, on my $10 account of figuring out ways I can uh, earn uh, extra assets without putting any extra money into the game so mm -hmm. i enjoy the challenge and i'm definitely here long term i'm not going anywhere yeah yeah me too um i think that's a re really great conversation around the rewards um i don't know if you have anything else you want to add there but i almost want to like s do like a hard shift into a different conversation and we'll maybe make it like two different videos do you have anything to add around the rewards the glint the you know uh criticisms or excitements around it um like i said the main thing i I'm, I'm excited about is just the ability that you can play whatever you want and get rewards from the store whenever you want. I think that's a, a big plus and a big bonus. Um, the one thing, and they've already talked about it, is uh, just adjusting the amount of glint that you get yeah. uh, per battle. Yeah. You know, once once they address that and make that you know a little bit more uh, favorable for for players, you know, that that will be a good thing. So yeah. they'll probably give it a season or two before they make adjustments. So in the meantime, we just have to. Uh, you know, just kind of do the best we can with the way it is now. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd like to add one note on that too. I think that, ch the, first of all, I think we know that changes are coming. It, the, the, Matt said in the Discord and to you, I think you said in a Discord conversation, it's like, we understand, we need to look at this. We're looking at the glint. It's not that he's promised they're going to increase it, but it's, I think it's pretty clear they're going to increase it. And I say that because it actually has ramifications for access to some of the rewards. So if you if you imagine that today and for the last two or three days, or however long this season has been going on, that glint has been relatively hard to acquire at, at uh, like I said earlier, in champion wild, I'm getting 300 glint per win. And in gold uh, modern, I'm getting about 250. Um, and it, for me, it's been hard to get out of diamond in modern. Um, and, and even at... I think modern, like I said, uh, Brave Tofu, I actually forget if it was modern. It must have been modern. In modern champ, he was getting 40 SPS and 1600 glint. Even at champion, um, you know, that's that sounds like a big number compared to what you or me are getting, but it's it's really from the glint perspective, 1600 is not very much. And I, and I think if we're certain that they're going to increase the glint rewards, you have to imagine what that will do to the economy of glint. Because right now, I would argue glint is relatively scarce. First of all, it's it's scarce because people haven't been saving it for months and months and months, or weeks and weeks and weeks. And second of all, it's it's scarce because they're not paying very much per win. And so if they change that dynamic and they start doubling it or tripling it or whatever, there's a percentage increase on the amount of glint you're receiving. You could imagine a couple things happen. Probably. Uh, people being more glint rich will buy more things such as maybe maybe it's energy because the SPS returns but I doubt it because the SPS to glint cost to me didn't seem very favorable maybe it's draws but I doubt it because the re the card rewards that are available are still those old ones which most people feel satisfied with I think what ultimately goes probably faster if they increase glint is these these titles um, and so just my final thought would, on it would be if you think that that logic makes sense and if you truly expect the team to act on increasing the glint you might imagine that these titles if they're interesting to you are it's like act sooner than later because they you know i don't know if they sell out i'm not i can't predict that but i i do believe you'll see increased buying pressure as the daily glint rewards are becoming more and more and more significant and maybe not just the daily rewards, but also the people choosing to, you know what, I could say goodbye to my Soulbound rewards or whatnot to access some of these. So that that's kind of a, maybe it's not a, it's not like a timer ticking it, you know, to zero, but it's more like a, it will be another consideration for those who are deeply interested in getting some of these higher titles to maybe think that through and act as quick as you can, because you don't want, if you, you want to avoid the competition. 
I'm curious to see too in the first like two to three weeks how many people because a lot of people have been complaining that it's really not play to earn anymore it's like oh they've taken all the rewards out you know I can't sell cards I can't do this and that the one thing you can sell are the titles so even with them being pricey there may be a lot of people that are like hey I'm gonna grind it out I'm gonna play as much as I can I'm gonna yeah. burn my soulbound cards because I want to get those titles because yeah. at least that is something that I can sell and, and get some money totally 100% I totally agree and I, I, I agree with you in the sense that the titles are this exit point or financial exit point, but I, I disagree with the, the, the suggestion that there is not, there's no rewards anymore. And when we look at the SPS being as high as it is, I showed you gold too, I'm getting six SPS per win. And people say, well, it's staked. Yes, it is. But man, f you can't wait even f one week to unlock one fourth of your SPS or four weeks to unlock all of the SPS. To me, I just, it, it just it, it rings so back to the, the almost the core of this entire video, which is just like, where's your idea or where's your head at with respect to the time scale? Are you here for today? It's got to pay something today or can't even play it. I'm not I don't I'm not even interested. Or are you willing to sort of defer some? I mean, four weeks is not a long time, man. And uh, and truly, if that's if that's your approach, I don't think you win big on any of this. Like it's got to be it's got to be a bigger time scale than that, where you just are willing to play and enjoy and accrue, and you know just wait and see what happens.